Okay, uh, I think it's now time to code. And I'll be putting everything in one script. So let's call this website blocker.py. And yeah, again, the idea is that I'll be accessing this host file, which is in this directory. So if you are on Windows, you get it here. If you are on a Mac or Linux, that would be directly at uh, this folder and then you have the host file. So uh, you get the idea. And so let's keep that path in a variable. Let's say host path, and that would be equal to, I had copied this uh, earlier, so I'm just pasting it here. And so on a Windows, these are backslashes. On a Mac or a Linux, you'd have a forward slash, and then etc, and then you have, of course, the uh, hosts name so the name of the file if you're on windows you should be careful about something these big slashes uh, sometimes you might have something like uh, let's say n a folder that starts with the n character uh, what that will do is python will will read this as a special character and what this special character mean is it means a break line so when you pass backslash n python thinks you're passing a python keyword and not actually a string. Mm, in that case, what you could do is you could pass the R prefix there, which means a row. Uh, that means, uh, remove this, uh, You with this you, you tell Python that you're actually passing a row string in there. So you're not planning to, to pass any break lines in there like a backslash n. Uh, yeah, I hope that is clear. Or alternatively, you can remove this and you can add two backslashes in each of these directory separators. So that would be an alternative solution, but let's keep it like this. Good. And maybe two other variables, let's say redirect equals to this string. So the IP where your browse visit will be redirected when you browse Facebook or other things that you find distracting. And then uh, let's say website, so you need to pass the websites that you want to block. Uh, that could be a list. So I'm calling this website list, and here I'll pass www.facebook.com. And also, you want to pass facebook.com as well, because sometimes these websites use three W's there for their domain, but the, sometimes you, they don't use. So you want to pass both of these domains in the host file. And then maybe my Hotmail account. So how do I know that this is a domain? Well, uh, if I type hotmail.com and uh, I, I can see that hotmail.com is sending me to this domain in the browser, so I can see this domain in the browser. And uh, when this opens up my email, uh, displays. So this is what you want to pass there. You want to see the final landing domain and maybe the the other version. And yeah, we should be good to go. We have a list with four elements and that means uh, in the host file we will have four lines. I currently have these Facebooks here. So I'm gonna save the hosts again with all those. And I'll make sure I don't have any Python script running here in the processes. Yeah, I don't have any. Good. And I was afraid that I had a running script, a Python script there. So that's why I checked in the processes. So how are we gonna do this? Uh, let me put this here and this here. Well, our goal is to have this this file modified at, uh, let's say, 8 a.m. So at that time, I want these four websites, the, these four lines to be added in here together with this IP. And then I want these four lines to be removed at, uh, let's say, 4 p.m. And there are maybe two ways to do this. One way would be to write a simple Python script that all it does is it opens this file let's say with open host path as file and then write these elements of the list in that file, in that host file. And, and that's all. 
and then what you do is you may use this task scheduler on Windows or cron on Linux or other packages that, that do schedule tasks and you may set this this Python script to run in certain times and that that is one solution but but why would I use third-party tools uh, when, when I know Python I mean I know Python better than these tools and I'm not 100% sure that with these tools I'll, I'll do exactly what, what I'm I'm after but with Python Python is a programming language so if you set to do something if you think about something that's almost 100% sure that, that you'll do that because because you have lots of flexibility with with a programming language so it's good that if you know a programming language and uh, then you should seek for a native solution and yeah that's what I'll do in this case I'll not just write a simple script that, that adds to uh, these four lines of code in this host file instead I'll have this script running all the time and to do that I'll use a while loop while true and then everything goes inside this while loop and what a while loop does is it executes an action very very fast so uh, it depends on your processor speed but in my case for instance what this will do it will print out one every uh, let me guess one millisecond so it depends on your processor speed but uh, maybe faster than one millisecond and so let me open a command line and execute this script uh, shift right click here open command window here this terminal plus package of atom is having a problem at the moment it has a bug so I'll be using uh, the simple command line terminal plus is probably more convenient but uh, this shouldn't be a problem so Python and uh, the script name is website blocker and uh, here one is being printed out as you see Control C to interrupt the process. Uh, what I'm thinking about is to have some code here that checks the time every millisecond. So it, that would be something like um, is time between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. If it is, then keep these lines in this host file. If it's not, then remove these lines from the host file. And that action would be performed every, uh, I'm saying, millisecond. Uh, but that's not a very smart thing to do. Why would you want your program to run every millisecond? That, that, that doesn't sound very memory efficient. So what we could do here is a simple trick. Uh, we import time and then here we say time sleep and let's say 5. And this time we execute this and 1 will be printed every five seconds so yeah that's it which means if we right now the code that accesses these uh, lines here this host file um, that code will run every five seconds and not every millisecond so that's enough accuracy for us uh, that means that if time is 4 p.m. and then it goes 4 and 1 second <laughs> Uh, we will still have this uh, lines here. We'll have this website blocked yet at 4 p.m. Uh, plus one second. So there will be a delay of five seconds, which is not a problem. And you can also put this uh, higher number. So you can make it five minutes, which would be 300, 300 seconds. Uh, but let me keep it five. Five is good. Five seconds. And yeah, I think this is starting to make more sense for you now. And I'd like to stop here, and in the next lecture we will go ahead and write the code that writes this lines in this host file.